Our aim in this part of the of the sugar bush is is to uh, talk about the the loading or the number of trees per acre. Um, as I've tried to explain along the way, this is a diverse woodlot. Uh, this is a nice area that, that shows a, a nice mix of red oak, white oak, black cherry. There are a few northern magnolias or cucumbers. Uh, but this is on the bigger end of the maple trees that we have in this, in this woodlot. I've done some increment bores in the past and, and this tree, which has a, a beautiful, beautiful canopy on it, uh, probably the tree is covering about an eighth of an acre of, of uh, a drip edge area of its, of its canopy, but the tree is probably a little bit in excess of 200 years old. Most of the trees in this woodlot that, that uh, Antonio has, has taken shots, panorama shots of earlier, are, are 75 to 100, 125 years old. Uh, the woodlot's been managed by my family for uh, the last uh, 80 years, uh, selective harvests, and we aim to have about 70 stems per acre. Um, what that does is it puts our, our maple trees on 22, 23 foot centers. Of course, we're working with a, with a native stand. None of these were planted in here, but with the release that we've done, uh, they're nicely spaced, which gives a tremendous amount of, of room for the canopy. Uh, the slope here is in, in 2,000 feet. It drops about 100 feet from the north to the south. Uh, it's slightly southeast facing, which is ideal for uh, our sugar operation, and gives a little bit of protection from some of the winds that we have that come across this part of, of western New York State. Again, it's a, a, a mixed and a diverse woodlot. Uh, we select for uh, uh, firewood for uh, beech, uh, hickory, ironwood, uh, uh, the occasional maple tree that, that has a bad top on it. We had a really bad ice storm here about 30 years ago, which did a lot of top damage, uh, but the trees seem to have, have uh, rebounded pretty significantly. Uh, again, there are agricultural fields on both sides of this woodlot. Uh, it is on extremely good and well-drained gravel soils. Uh, there's Shenango gravelly loam, our bath veloy silt loams, um, and, and again, uh, really, really good drainage. Okay, one of the issues that we've got that we're dealing with is the the, um, the influx of, of emerald ash borer and the damage that that has fraught on our northern hardwoods. And one thing that we hadn't, we hadn't figured on, we, we were pretty well aware of the widow makers that are created in the upper canopy of the tree where about three years after the tree dies, the branches start to fall off and create real problems with our lines. But what we found with the increasing winds that we've had over the last couple of years, that not only was the canopy rotting away, but the root systems were actually beginning to uh, be destroyed. And then the wind would take them over and there's, there's nothing left uh, of, the, of the system to support it. So we're finding in just the last year or so uh, that we're getting a lot of wind throw uh, and as I said earlier, the same thing is happening if there is a line anywhere near the tree, the tree has to fall on it and take it out. So we will, we simply cut branches off from the lines this spring when we came in uh, so that we could get our tubing up and get our sap system working. But this summer we'll come in and, and, and take this out and repair our lines. But this has been a growing problem, actually it's been a dying problem, uh, here in the woodlot uh, because of the invasive species uh, emerald ash borer and the damage that it has created. Particularly here in New York Street, State, uh, one tree in five, 20% of our trees were white ash and, and most of them have been affected uh, and have created a real, real hole in the, in the forest ecosystem. <laughs>
So there's a good amount of vacuum here at each of the tap holes. And the idea is actually to have, I'm, I'm drawing about 20 inches of mercury on the entire system. Uh, and the idea is to have a tremendous amount of vacuum here and a tremendous amount of vacuum at the end of the line that I talked about. Now, no lateral line, the little blue lines, is longer than 70 feet. And we, we try to use as few taps per lateral line as possible, but in no place do we have more than seven taps on one of these small lateral lines. And there are about 2,600 taps in this sugar bush. And this is where the sap actually uh, congregates and goes underground from the corner of the woods to the uh, reverse osmosis unit and the sump at the, at the road. Uh, there's 1,700 feet of both dry and wet line, vacuum line and sap line that work that goes under the working land. Uh, as I said, 1,700 feet down through the fields. So it enters at this point, which is one of the critical spots uh, in the whole operation. The sap lines have to be empty uh, on any night where it's going to go before freezing because. If it freezes, it'll freeze here, and it takes a tremendous amount of time for this to thaw out. So they, we insert them underground. During the fall, I will bring straw and leaves in here to insulate this juncture. Uh, I take it off during this part of the season simply because I want the sunlight to, uh, to keep these lines above freezing. So the lines uh, to my left, uh, to the woods, uh, are all on grade, uh, are suspended from posts and, and trees and tied back. Uh, and this is the beginning of the, the wet, dry, vacuum assisted tubing system. And there is just under 20 miles of tubing in this uh, uh, 49 acre woodlot. And we're using probably about 30 acres of this mature uh, beech birch maple uh, northern hardwood forest. Okay, and this is the uh, wet and dry manifold system that we, I talked about earlier. The top line is vacuum line normally. The bottom line, this is inch and a half, the bottom line is inch and a quarter. And the idea is there's, there's sap running through the bottom line all the way to the underground and then to the, to the road where the tanks are. If indeed we have a freeze, which is what we, we want, freezing nights and thawing days, and if the wet line, the sap line, freezes and, and doesn't thaw out in time for the sap to start running, sap can actually come in on the dry line where there's vacuum runs down through, comes in and will go down the so-called dry line until the bottom line or wet line thaws out. So not only does the, the, the two line system deliver equal vacuum throughout the, the, the 20 miles of tubing that we have here, or the 2,000 feet up through the woods that we have of main line, it serves as a vacuum reservoir, also serves as a fail-safe uh, with the wet line or the sap line if indeed the bottom line freezes for any reason or if a tree falls on it. Uh, if a tree falls on it, it's going to take both lines down, but nevertheless, it's, it is a fail-safe for us. So we've got main lines going the full length of the woods and then every hundred feet up through the woods, there are 17 of these manifolds where the lateral lines go back both to the east and the west uh, and then the small sap lines are all teed into those with a, with a manifold on each of those. So the, the idea is, is to get the sap as quickly out of the woodlot as you can. Everything is on grade. Uh, we've had a bit of a problem as you see around uh, with emerald ash borer damage and wind damage. Uh, it seems as though if there's a tree that wants to fall, it will hit one of our lines. 
The lateral lines are 5 16 inch food grade. Uh, we normally don't use more than a single tap, although that one's got a two tap, a two -tap tree. We're using 5 16 inch spiles, a new spile, a new drop line each year. Thank you.